Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Peace be upon all of you. Welcome to our program, Spiritual Fireside Chat. Tonight our theme is going to be how to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But before that, let me recite a few verses, insha'Allah, to open up our program. And then right after that, I am going to invite our speaker of tonight, insha'Allah. And the verses that I am going to recite uh, are from Surah Al-A'raf, chapter 7, and three verses from 54 all the way up to 56, insha'Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن ربكم الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم مستوى على العرش يغشي الليل النار يطلب حثيثا والشمس والقمر والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر تبارك الله رب العالمين ادعوا ربكم تضرعا وخفيا إنه لا يحب المعتدين ولا تفسدوا في الأرض بعد إصلاحها ودعوا خوفا وطمعا إن رحمة الله قريب من المحسنين صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned at the beginning, our theme is how to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as you know, in the Quran, there are so many verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us and encouraged us to connect with him through dua. The verses such as, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُ بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ Or another verse such as اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Or قُلْ مَا يَعْبَوْ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْ لَا دُعَاؤُكُمْ Basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting and saying that ask and pray and then I will respond to your prayers. So that is given but tonight inshallah our speaker brother Ahmed you know, Gabalavi is going to talk about the how part. How should we seek and ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So without any further ado, I would like to invite our speaker and one of our khatibs, Brother Ahmed Gabalavi. Inshallah, even though his name is under Mahjouba Masuri, but his name is Ahmed Gabalavi. Welcome, Brother Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa Wa alaikum as -salam. Good to see you. Uh, I think my wife uh, is taking over for this lecture, so yeah. I'm, I'm covering for her. <laughs> it's always good time to take over. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. 
وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد. First of all, uh, Jazakallah khair, brother uh, Asim, for the introduction. Uh, and again, this is about uh, how to seek help from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. There's a, a concept in the Quran called al wasila uh, only mentioned twice in the Quran in Surah Al Maida. Ya ya ladina ma taqul Allah wa taqul ilahi al wasila. Uh, all you who believe have a taqwa of Allah, uh, the God consciousness, and seek the wasila. And the wasila is seeking the help from Allah Almighty. And in Surah Al Isra, this name wasila or concept wasila is also mentioned. Allah is talking about the, the kuffar, they're asking the idols, right, to, to, to have the wasila, the connection uh, with Allah Almighty. And this is interesting because if you want to ask Allah, ask him directly, why do you have to go through uh, someone who's dead uh, or, some, or a statue of someone, right, to, uh, to ask Allah Almighty. And uh, very interestingly, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, uh, when his father brought him an idol in the um, in his house, uh, Abu Bakr said, "What's your name? Can you do this? Can you do that?" And Abu Bakr realized that this idol, right, can't even speak back, can't even mention his name. Right? Uh, so he he immediately basically said, "This is not you know something to be asked for or to worship." Basically, uh, so we will talk about this wasila, how to ask Allah Almighty for for help. Right? Uh, the first way is uh, asking Allah Almighty for help by virtue of the fact that we believed in Allah Almighty. We ask Allah Almighty for help by virtue of the fact that you and I believe in Allah Almighty. We read in the Quran, رَبَّنَا إِنَّنَا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي لِإِيمَانِ أَنَا أَمِنُوا بِرَبِّكُمْ فَأَمَنْ In Surah Al Imran, O oh Allah, we hear a caller calling for the Iman, for the faith, and we believe. Uh, so again, they're qualifying by saying, we, we hear the caller uh, calling for Iman, for the faith, for the ones of Allah Almighty, and we believe. Then they ask for the dua. They ask for Allah, for what do you want? رَبَّنَا فَغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَكَفْرْ عَنَّ سَيِّئَتِنَا وَتَوْفَرَ مَا أَبْرَرَ After saying we, we believe in you, Allah, then they ask for what do you want? Oh Allah, forgive our sins. Oh Allah, uh, pass over our faults. And Allah make us die uh, with those who are righteous. So this is the first way to ask Allah for help for the du'a, is to say, "Oh Allah, I believe in you. I follow your messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam." Then you you ask what you want from Allah Almighty. And very beautifully in uh, uh, hadith by Ibn Hibban, uh, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is using the same concept, the concept of qualifying that he believed in Allah, to make du'a for us, believe it or not. He says in the hadith, Allahumma man amana bika wa shahada anni rasuluka, O Allah, whoever believed in you and bear witness that I am your messenger. So, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is he doing? He's saying, he's qualifying by saying, O Allah, whoever believed in you and bear witness that I am your messenger. Fahabbib ilahi laqaik, O Allah, make meeting you beloved to this person. Wa sahla alayhi qadaik, and O Allah, make the divine destiny easy for that person. Uh, oh Allah, give him a little of this dunya, of this uh, worldly life. Uh, so, so basically what he's saying is, he's qualifying by saying, oh Allah, who believed in you, and bear witness that I'm your messenger, and then, oh Allah, make the divine destiny easy for this person, oh Allah, make meeting you, oh Allah, for this person beloved, and oh Allah, give him little of this dunya. So this is the first way to ask Allah for help is to, to start your da'a, to start your ask, your request by saying, oh Allah, I believe in you and I follow your messenger. Uh, the second way is to ask Allah by, by virtue of his beautiful needs. And uh, Surah Al-Araf, Allah, to Allah belongs all the beautiful names, all the beautiful attributes, all the beautiful qualities. Then seek help from Allah, make du'a to Allah, ask what you want from Allah by those names. So you say, oh Allah, Ya Kareem, oh Allah, you're the generous. Ya Rahim, oh Allah, you're the most merciful. Then you ask. Ya Razak, oh Allah, you're the sustainer. Then you ask. So you begin your da'a, you begin your ask by mentioning one of the attributes of Allah. Especially these two attributes, which are called uh, Ismullah al-A'zam, 
the greatest name of Allah Almighty. And before I mention this, the greatest names of Allah Almighty, a beautiful hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, right? In which uh, the man, a man who was making dua in the masjid and the messenger of Allah Salam overheard his dua. And this person said in his dua, Ya Hay Ya Qayyum, uh, Ya Hay Ya Qayyum, O oh, the most living, O oh, the one who, who sustains, the one who protects all things. Ya Hay, the one who's ever living, Ya Qayyum, the one who's in control of all things, the one who protects all things, the one who sustains everyone and everything. And then he, he made his dua. So the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, لَقَدْ سَأَلَ اللَّهَ بِإِسْمِ اللَّهِ الْأَعْظَمِ الَّذِي إِذَا سُؤَلَ بِهِ أَجَابِ الَّذِي إِذَا دُعَيَ بِهِ أَجَابِ وَإِذَا سُؤَلَ بِهِ أَعْظَمِ He is, this person invoked the greatest name of Allah Almighty by which if this name is invoked, if Allah is asked, he will give. If, if a, a person makes dua with this, this, this name, uh, the dua will be accepted, will be answered. And it is, يَا حَيْ يَا قَيُّمْ حَيْ means the one who is ever living. Qayyum, the one who's in control of all, of all things. And this is called Ismullah al Agham, the greatest name of Allah Almighty. Only mention three surahs in the Quran uh, Surah Al Baqarah, uh, Allah wa la ilaha illa wa Qayyum, Surah Al Imran, Allah wa la ilaha illa wa Hayy Qayyum, and Surah Taha, wa Anatul Wujuhu al Hayy Qayyum. So this is again another way to, uh, to make dua, to ask Allah for what He wants by invoking one of his attributes, one of his qualities, especially these two qualities, the Hay Ya Qayyum. Hay is the one who's ever living. Qayyum, the one who's in control of all things, the one who protects all things, the one who sustains everything. A third way to ask Allah for what you want is to, uh, to mention something good that you've done for the sake of Allah Almighty. I gave a khutbah three months ago or so in the Islamic Center. Uh, the title of this khutbah is Helping up yourself by helping others. In Hadith al Bukhari, uh, the person who's holding the milk for his parents until, you know, in case they wake up. And, and the person who did not take advantage of his cousin and gave her the money that she needs. And the person who paid his, his employer, even though he left a long time ago, but he paid him and he said, All this land, all this cattle, it's all yours. I invested your, your money, basically. So, what these three people did is they they have done something good to, to others for the sake of Allah Almighty. And by virtue of this good deed that they've done for others, uh, the cave that they were in was blocked by a rock and the rock opened basically. So that's another way to ask Allah for what you want by, by doing a good deed. And, and you, you don't be shy, don't be humble. <laughs> you say, oh Allah, you know, I've done this for your sake. Maybe you give, you know, your, you had, you just walked out of a restaurant and you had some food and you saw a homeless person. You say, you know what? I can afford to buy another one here. Or maybe you saw another person, you know, and you bought two meals, one for yourself, one for this person. And well, like, even though it's very small, deed, you do it for the sake of Allah Almighty. It would feel very good inside your heart. And this is a way to ask Allah Almighty. You say, oh Allah, by virtue of the fact that I help this person, uh, then do this for me. Um, another way to ask Allah Almighty is to ask a righteous person, to ask a righteous person who's alive, not dead, who's alive, to make dua for you. Uh, and we see in the Quran and Surah Yusuf, uh, the brothers of Yusuf, they ask their father, Ya Abana, istaghfil lana dhunubana. Oh, our father, ask Allah to forgive our sins. What are they doing? They're asking a righteous person who is a prophet to make dua for them. And again, the, the most important thing to remember is a righteous person who is alive. In my culture, and most of your cultures were taught to go to the grave of someone who passed away and ask this person to, to ask Allah Almighty to make dua for you, which doesn't work because this person is dead. So we don't go to somebody's grave, however righteous he or she is, to ask him, or her to make dua for you. We ask Allah Almighty to make dua for us. You ask Allah Almighty directly, or you ask a righteous person who is alive. A very famous story of Omar al-Khattab anhu, when there was uh, a drought, and he brought, and this is after the message of Allah Sallallahu passed away, he brought Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. And he says, oh Allah, we used to seek help from you for rain. 
when the messenger of Allah وسلم, was alive, that he passed away, we ask you by virtue of the fact that we have Al-Abbas ibn Abd al-Muttalib amongst us to give us the rain. So look what Omar said, he did not invoke the messenger of Allah وسلم, he passed away. He invoked a righteous person, Al-Abbas ibn Abd al-Muttalib to make dua to Allah. Very important, I know it's, it's hard for to let go of our culture, our traditions, um, but you know, this is how we should do it. He asked a righteous person to make dua uh, for you. Uh, another way to make dua for, uh, to Allah Almighty is to mention your condition. You know, again, alhamdulillah, there's no, uh, there's nothing between us and Allah Almighty. We don't have to go to an imam or a mullah or a sheikh or someone to confess to, to so that we can get to Allah Almighty. It's between you and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the Quran, there's so many stories how the prophets are making dua to Allah Almighty by mentioning their conditions. You know, Zakariya alayhi salam, he says, Oh Allah, Rabbi, inni wahan al minni wa ashta'ala al Oh Allah, my, my bones are weak and my hair is all gray. Right? What, what is Zakariya doing? He's mentioning his conditions, right? And, and my wife cannot give birth, is barren. Then give me a righteous uh, child from you. Look, what is Zakaria doing? He's mentioning his conditions. Pure and simple. Oh Allah, I'm too old. Uh, my wife is barren and I want a child. Uh, Yusuf is doing the same thing. Uh, oh Allah, listen, I prefer to be in jail than committing what they're asking me to do. What is Yusuf doing, alayhi salam? He's mentioning his condition to Allah. Uh, Musa, alayhi salam, qala rabbi inni lima anzalta alayhi min khayna faqir. Oh Allah, I'm going to die on me for anything from you. Uh, so this is very important because this is a conversation between myself, yourself, and Allah. You know, just between you and Allah. Mention your condition. However, I say bad it is or poor it is, mention to Allah. Allah wants to hear you um, and, and, and listen to you. And, uh, this is called Ashakwa. Uh, there's a famous in Surah Al-Mujadala, قَدْ سَمْعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا تَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ The woman that uh, her husband told her, you're like my mother to me. And she complained to Allah Almighty about, you know, he, he said this to me, right? And, and, and Allah answered her dry. He revealed one surah, Surah Al-Mujadala, uh, about this situation. Uh, another way to uh, seek help from Allah Almighty is to uh, to mention the, the 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 blessing of Allah Almighty on you in the past. To mention what Allah has blessed you with in the past. Uh, Zakaria alayhi salam says, "Walam akun bidu'aika Rabbi shakiya." Oh Allah, uh, I was never unhappy or unsuccessful when I made du'a to you. So what is he doing? Uh, Zakaria is mentioning his previous condition. Oh Allah, everything you've done to me or everything I asked for, you give me. Therefore, he's asking for something else. Uh, Yusuf uh, does the same thing. He mentions the, the previous ni'mas of Allah Almighty. Oh Allah, you gave me from the kingdom. You taught me from the interpretation of dreams. Fatir of samawati wal You are the creator of heavens and earth. You are my protector in this life and the hereafter. And then he says, and Make me die as a Muslim and make me in the company of those who are righteous. So what is Yusuf doing? He's mentioning the previous ni'mah of Allah on him. You know, he gave him the hikmah, the wisdom. He taught him how to interpret dreams. And then he says, oh Allah, now I want to, to die as a Muslim and I want to be among in the company of those who are righteous. And Trust you me, there are so many ni'mas of Allah Almighty uh, on me and on all of us in the past. Quite often we think of the difficulty and the hardship and the children and the wife and the husband and the job and, and the money and making ends meet, uh, which is real. We can tell Allah, oh Allah, you saved me from this person. You saved me from this accident. Oh Allah, you bless me with this. Oh Allah, you give me this. And I want this. So we're saying you mentioned to Allah Almighty his blessings on you in the past, and then you ask for something uh, new. So I, I know I mentioned uh, a lot of things. I'll summarize it. I also 
mention one thing that very, very important. So first, uh, how to seek help from Allah Almighty. You can seek help from Allah Almighty first by saying, Allah, I believe in you and I follow your messenger, وسلم, and then you ask for what you want. Another one is to invoke the, the names of Allah Almighty. Ya Hayy, Ya Qayyum, Oh Allah, you're the most living, you are ever living. Oh Allah, you're the one in control of all things. Oh Allah, you're the generous. Oh Allah, you're, you're the Adl. You know, oh Allah, you're Razak, you're the sustainer. Then you, you ask Allah for what you want. Uh, you can ask Allah by, by mentioning a good deed that you have done for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, I was tempted to do this, but I decided not to do it for your sake. Oh Allah, by virtue of this fact, Oh Allah, give me this. Uh, you can uh, ask from Allah Almighty by asking a righteous person who was alive, not, not dead, <laughs> uh, to ask this person to please Sheikh Hasim make dua for me. Uh, and then another one is to mention your condition, what you're going through with your family, your husband, your wife, your at work, whatever it is, your condition. You know, and again, this is between you and Allah Almighty. Only Allah Almighty hears it. Uh, and the last one, but not the least, is to uh, ask Allah Almighty by virtue of the fact that he bestowed so many ni'amas on you. You can mention this name, oh Allah, you give me this, you give me that, you save me from this, and then you ask for, for something. And you know, you and I always ask, well, I've did all of this, you know, Brother Ahmed, and uh, nothing happened. Well, Allah Almighty would love to hear our dua. And, and maybe what we're asking Allah for is not good for us. You know, you, 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 uh, in, in a, in a very, uh, very good, very beautiful hadith, uh, the message of Allah is, is telling us why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give us what we ask for. He says, you know, you know, you, if somebody is, is sick amongst you, you deprive him of food and water. Why do you do that? Because if you give that patient food and water, it's not good for him or her. And sometimes doctor says, no eating, no drinking for 12 hours, for one day, right? Why? Because water and food is not, is, is, is not good for you? No, it's good for you. But it's not good for you at this time. And the doctor is depriving you from food and water for you to get better. And Allah sometimes deprives us from what we ask us, what we ask him for, even though it might be good. Because at this time, if Allah gives us to ask for, maybe we will not ask him again. Maybe we'll go astray. Maybe we'll transgress. Maybe we'll misuse it, right? And Allah knows the answer, right? So this is, just because Allah doesn't give it to us doesn't mean Allah is not answering our dua. Actually, Allah answers our dua by not giving it to us because if he gives it to us, if you give the food and water to the patient right now, <laughs> condition will, will, will worsen. And sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give us what we ask for because he wants to hear us. You know, he wants to hear our voice. He wants to see our, our tears and our faces. He wants us to, to actually get close to him. You know, sometimes, you know, when we when Allah gives us what you want, khalas. Alhamdulillah, Allah give me what I want. Uh, why, why would I ask him again? Why should I go, you know, and do something else? You know, because I already got what I want. So sometimes Allah does not give us what we want because he wants to hear our voice. He wants us to be uh, close to him. And another reason why Allah does not give us what we want, he gives us what we want, but we don't uh, feel it, right? It could be we're asking for something and Allah saves us from something else, right? Uh, Aisha radiallahu anha is saying a very beautiful saying. Uh, it says that, uh, uh, that uh, the bala, you know, the difficulty of the hardship is coming down and the dua is going up to Allah Almighty. Sometimes the dua is so strong that it overpowers, overcomes the hardship, the difficulty, the test. Sometimes the test is so strong that it overcomes the dua. And sometimes nobody wins. <laughs> the dua and the difficulty are like, they keep fighting with each other. Kind of like, you know, when you, when you're, uh, when you, when you have temperature, right? And you take uh, Tylenol, right, for example. And sometimes the, the Tylenol doesn't do anything. Right? Uh, because the fever it is so severe, right? And sometimes the Tylenol actually reduces the temperature and it goes down. And sometimes nothing happens. The temperature doesn't go up, doesn't go down, right? So this is exactly what the, the dua, sometimes the dua overpowers the hardship or the difficulty. Sometimes the difficulty hardship overpowers the dua. And sometimes there's just nothing happens. It gets even, it doesn't get worse. It doesn't get better, basically. So may Allah make us among those who make dua to Allah Almighty by all this, 
ways I mentioned, and among those who are patient, if Allah does not answer our du'a, and we always make du'a to Allah Almighty, knowing very well Allah will answer our du'a sooner or later. I mean, thank you so much, Brother Ahmed, for such a beautiful topic, such a beautiful talk. And may Allah bless you and your family members as well. And please keep us and keep me and keep our community members in your prayers as well, inshallah. Amen. And thank you. And we look forward to hearing your khutbah at the end of December as well. Inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are going to pray Salat al Aisha. So, let me prepare the screen for you. And I will call the event. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Shadu Allah ilaha illa Allah, Shadu Allah ilaha illa Allah, Shadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, أشهد أن محمد رسول الله عي على الصلاة عي على الصلاة عي على الفلاح عي على الفلاح في خلق السماوات والأرض 
ربنا ما خلقت ما باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيت وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسولك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين رحمة ربك عبدا زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا قال رب إني وهن العظم مني واشتعل الرأس شيبا ولم أكن بدعائك رب شقيا وإني خفت الموالي من ورائي وكانت امرأتي عاقرا وكانت امرأتي عاقرا فهب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني ويرث من آل يعقوب واجعله رب رضيا يا زكريا إنا نبشرك بغلام اسمه يحيى لم نجعل له من قبل سميا قال رب أنا يكون لي غلام وكانت امرأتي عاقرا وكانت امرأتي عاقرا وقد بلغت من الكبر عتيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين وقد خلقتك من قبل ولم تك شيئا قال رب اجعل لي آية قال آيتك ألا تكلم الناس ثلاث ليال سويا فخرج على قومي من المحراب فأوحى إليهم 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله
الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك وطاعتك اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدينا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وارحم موتانا اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب التعوات O oh Allah, make faith dear to us and beautified in our hearts and make disbelief, sin and disobedience dislike to us and make us among the rightly guided. O oh Allah, we ask you for guidance, taqwa, virtue and sufficiency. O oh Allah, you are the controller of the hearts. Please turn our hearts to your religion and obedience. O oh Allah, show us the truth as true and inspire us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it. O oh Allah, our Lord, grant the goodness of this world and of the hereafter and protect us from the hellfire. And O oh Allah, forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive all the believers. O oh Allah, forgive the shortcomings and the mistakes of all our uh, deceased and, and accept them in the paradise. وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهتنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers our du'as 
all of our good deeds to your brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and protect the loved ones. So tomorrow is Friday and our khatib is going to be uh, Dr. Aslam Abdullah, inshallah. And the program is going to start at 12.45 with Quranic recitation. And the khutbah starts at 1 p.m. in person and via Zoom. Uh, I'm sorry, via Facebook and, and our website, inshallah. Please join us. And until I see you, have a great night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.